Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick, or the Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about my top five overlooked players for fantasy football in 2020. Now, these guys are being overlooked maybe due to injury, maybe due to the fact that a lot of people's perception on them isn't that they are a very good player at all, or maybe just because not enough people are even talking about the player to boost up their ADP and make them go where I think they should be going in the 2020 fantasy football draft. So before I get into the video, I'd like to ask if you guys could please go down below and click that subscribe button. It's free, and I produce content every single day to help you guys win your 2020 fantasy football championship so without further ado let's get right into it fantasy football 2020 my top five overlooked players also follow me on twitter down below at notorious fntsy so first player here is zach moss rookie running back out of utah five foot nine 223 pounds his ffpc adp is 130.46 ffpc is those type of leagues where you pay a decent amount of money they're the high stakes fantasy football leagues and adp means average draft position so pick 130 in those drafts we will also be talking about their adp from other websites on the next point of the video so 4.65 40 yard dash which is absolutely fucking terrible he said he got hurt so maybe that's what happened so 46 percentile speed score and a 42nd percentile bench press so he didn't really test very well at the combine due to the fact that he got hurt on other websites his ADP is running back number 48 overall pick 124 and he's an 11th round pick in 12 team PPR league so he obviously gets drafted from Utah to Buffalo this season in the 2020 fantasy or not tw fantasy football draft the NFL draft so in 2019 in his college at Utah he played 13 games 235 rushes 1416 rushing yards six yards per carry 28 receptions on 29 targets, so pretty solid hands from Zach Moss. 388 receiving yards, 17 total tighties, and a 9% target share in that Utah offense. So what made me like Zach Moss? It's not really that I love Zach Moss. I think Zach Moss is the next coming of Adrian Peterson. That Zach Moss is the next coming of Christian McCaffrey, Alvin Kamara, Saquon Barkley. What are these elite running backs in the NFL? He's not that, but he is put into what we would call in fantasy football a perfect situation to actually perform. He goes to Buffalo, which their division now is actually kind of much softer than it used to be, but not really because the Jets and the Dolphins are super bad. I mean, I'm a Dolphins fan. I think the Jets fucking suck, but because the Patriots have lost the best quarterback of all time in Tom Brady. So maybe now they could easily whoop the Patriots, especially when the Patriots defense got a bit deflated, just like the ball that Brady was using up against the Colts a couple of years ago. So right now the Bills are looked at as the favorite to win the AFC East, and I honestly can completely understand it. So why does Zach Moss benefit from being on this team? I think they're a team that's going to be able to get up in the games, and then they're going to be able to run the ball. And last season, we saw Devin Singletary and Frank Gore have a nice split share pretty much all season long. If we look at it for the whole season, Devin Singletary had 540 snaps, 49.5% of the snaps, and Frank Gore had 381, 35.9% of the snaps. So what I, do I think is going to happen in 2020? I think we see Zach Moss and Devin Singletary split split. 50-50. So why did they even draft Zach Moss if they already saw Devin Singletary have a great deep stretch into the season? So at the beginning of the year, he was kind of looked at as, oh, he's the backup to Frank Gore. And then he eventually merged past that and became the pretty good talent for fantasy football that we saw out of Devin Singletary. Why does this happen? Why do they need to bring Zach Moss? Why? It's because they don't have confidence in Devin Singletary, I believe. There's other backs behind Devin Singletary that would have been fine to have going into the 2020 NFL season, but instead they decided to draft Zach Moss to help bolster that running back core. And what I think that means is we're going to see not a workhorse Devin Singletary, but a one-two punch in Zach Moss and Devin Singletary. Now, right now, Zach, or not Zach Moss, Devin Singletary is looked at as like a fourth or fifth round pick in your 2020 fantasy football draft. So why the fuck is that when I think Zach Moss is going to be getting like a 50-50 split, if not 55 Devin Singletary, 45 to Zach Moss? I don't understand it. I think we see Zach Moss have an amazing season, and he's being very, very overlooked because he wasn't one of those top five backs that you'd look at for the NFL draft. And if Devin Singletary was to get hurt, we would see Zach Moss absolutely tear it up. So why not take an 11th round pick on Zach Moss. I really just don't understand why he is being pushed back so far, especially with the skill set that Zach Moss possesses. Obviously, it might be the combine that scares people because he ended up getting hurt, but at the end of the day, I think Zach Moss is going to be a pick that is very well worth your 11th round selection. So next guy to talk about here is old man Deshaun Jackson, FFPC ADP pick 167. Point 
83 of the Philadelphia Eagles. Used to be a Philadelphia Eagle. Then he went on a tour to these other teams. And then he came bike to the Eagles last season. 5'10", 175 pounds out of California. He's an old man now at 33 years old. But he's still just as fast as he was in college. He ran a 4 point three five in college 98th percentile 40 yard dash 46th percentile speed score 48th percentile I should say 36th percentile burst score 74th percentile Jody score and a 49th percentile catch radius now why do I like Deshaun Jackson for the Philadelphia Eagles he only played in one game last year pretty much he played in two games but he ended up getting hurt week two in that one week that he actually played before he got hurt, he was absolutely balling out for the Philadelphia Eagles. He was one of the best wide receivers that week. He finished as wide receiver number two in week one with 35.4 fantasy football points. How did he do that? 10 total targets, eight receptions, 154 receiving yards, and two total touchdowns. So he had a fucking amazing game. So why are people overlooking him? He's wide receiver number 57. Overall pick 166. So he's a 14th round pick. He's getting picked where people are starting to pick fucking defenses in your fantasy football draft. So what did the Philadelphia Eagles do in the offseason to make you warrant moving Deshaun Jackson down so far? They bring in Jalen Reger. That's what they do. They don't do anything else. I don't fucking understand why people are scared of Deshaun Jackson. While he is one of those picks where you draft him, you throw him in your flex spot, and you pray to the fantasy football lords up there that he does not break his leg and that he just absolutely does the stanky leg in the end zone and balls out because he will have those games that wins you the week. He's like Tyreek Hill, except for Tyreek Hill typically doesn't completely shit the bed and ruin your team. I think Deshaun Jackson is being severely under evaluated and overlooked due to the fact that they bring in Jalen Rager and due to the fact that he got hurt so early in last season. They don't remember that week one, he was the second best wide receiver in fantasy football. And I think if Deshaun Jackson could stay healthy, especially with the other wide receiver core around him being so injury prone, we could see an amazing season out of Mr. d in 2020. Next guy up to bat, the third overlooked player, is Gardner Minshew, quarterback of the Jacksonville Jaguars, FFPC ADP 137 point 13 six foot one 225 pounds his 40 yard dash is like your grandfather a 497 but he does actually run the rock pretty efficiently in the NFL 24th percentile 77th percentile burst score 39th percentile agility score 50 or 38th percentile throw velocity he's not really throwing the ball super hard but I didn't even know that that was a fucking metric you could view and 97th percentile wonderlick score so this guy is wicked smart Gardner Minshew not a guy you'd expect to be wicked smart with a mustache like that but the mustache is clearly elevating him to get those smarts so last year in Jacksonville I am going to move my camera up a little bit so you guys can see it all last year in Jacksonville quarterback number 19 in 14 games 470 passing attempts 33.6 per game 20th at the quarterback position, 3,271 passing yards, 233.6 per game, 20th at the quarterback position, 21 passing touchdowns at a 4.5% rate, 19th at the quarterback position. So talking about quarterback touchdown rates, you actually want your rate to be around a 5. If it's higher than that, that seems like an anomaly. If it's at like 7 to 9, that's fucking crazy. If it's below 5, if it's at like a 3.5 or a 4, I think that's pretty low. But I think we see a 4.5% rate as pretty average for a guy like Gardner Minshew. 6 INTs, 20 interceptions passes the interceptable passes was 14th in the NFL and he had 67 carries sixth in the NFL 344 rushing yards fifth in the NFL for 24.6 rushes per game and zero rushing touchdowns which I think will definitely go up if he's carrying the ball sixth most in the NFL this season so I think we actually see a much better version of Gardner Minshew in 2020 obviously he gets thrown into the game week one after big dick Nick was absolutely torching the Kansas City Chiefs but he ends up getting hurt at that very moment, the Minshew mania did begin. It was the birth of it. Last season, Gardner Minshew was on pace for 557 passing attempts. The Jaguars' defense is god fucking awful. So how does that help Gardner Minshew? Because they're going to be down and they're going to have to be throwing the rock. If you noticed a couple of years ago, back when Blake Bortles was the starting quarterback of the Jacksonville Jaguars, they were good. Or not the Jaguars were good, but Blake Bortles was good because they were down early and they had to throw the rock late in the game. He was garbage time Blake Bortles. And we could see garbage time Gardner eat this year. And they draft LaVishka Chenault. They bring in another wide receiver. Their wide receiver core, besides DJ Chark and LaVishka Chenault, might be the most average wide receivers you've ever seen grace an NFL field. Guys like D.D. Westbrook are just super average NFL talents that will help Gardner Minshew. None of these guys are fucking awful on the team. So I think we could see Gardner Minshew really eat this year, especially with, I think, Leonard Fournette 
and the rushing offense t- kind of taking a back seat, and they're going to be passing the ball a lot more in 2020. I really think Gardner Minshew has an amazing year this year, and he's being severely underlooked. Quarterback number 24 when the guy finished as a top 12 quarterback a bunch of times last season. I think he's just being criminally underrated due to the fact that a lot of people just view Gardner Minshew as last season, him being an anomaly, him being that guy that just comes in and fucking destroys, and he's a one-year wonder, but I don't think that's what we see out of the mustache man in Jacksonville. If we look at his games last season, Week 1, he came in up against the Kansas City Chiefs and threw two touchdowns to one INT for 17.6 PPR points, or fantasy football points, so I think that's four point per passing touchdown, and he finishes the 15th best quarterback. And then after that, 16 points, 18 points, 16, 21, and then week 6, he absolutely falters. Against the New Orleans Saints, 4.6 points, and then he comes back, plays well, 19 points, 24 points, 7 points, and then they bench him for big dick Nick Foles, and then he comes back and has two average games, 8 points, 13 points, and then he starts putting the points on back again, 18, 14, and 22, week 17. So I think we could see a Gardner Minshew that looked ready to go. He knows he's the starting quarterback of the team. They didn't draft a quarterback to sit behind him. What they're doing is they're waiting for Trevor Lawrence. If they suck absolute ass, they get Trevor Lawrence. But if Gardner Minshew is good, they built pieces around him for him to succeed. So I think we see a great year out of Gardner Minshew this season. The fourth guy on the list right now is Brashad Perryman, wide receiver of the New York Football Jets. If you guys have enjoyed this video thus far, please make sure to click that subscribe button down below. Now, obviously, last season, Brashad Perryman was a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. Rashad Perryman is six foot two, two hundred and twelve pounds. He was a first round pick out of UCF a couple of years ago, twenty six point eight years old. And this guy is an absolute speedster. 100th percentile 40 yard dash, 4.3, 99th percentile speed score, and a 74th percentile burst score. So the guy's very fast. And I find it funny that his best comparable player is Kevin White, who is an absolute bust in the NFL. Whereas Rashad Perryman last season showed that he could be a number one wide receiver for a NFL team. Right now, he is going as wide receiver number 61 off the board, round number 15, overall pick 100. And 76. So he finished last year's wide receiver number 51, 9.9 PPR points per game, 56 at wide receiver, 14 games, 69 targets, very nice, 63rd at wide receiver, 36 receptions, 69th at wide receiver, very nice again, super nice for Brashad Perryman, 645 receiving yards, six total touchdowns, and two red zone receptions. So why do I think Brashad Perryman could be a wide receiver one? And it's simple, you just have to look at these stats. Week 14, Mike Evans gets hurt. So this is where the stats on the left side of your screen come from, from week 14 to week 17. And then week 15, Chris Godwin gets hurt. So he really is the wide receiver one halfway through week 15. And he kind of, he was the wide receiver two, obviously, once Chris Godwin was obviously healthy. So out of split, the first like 14 games of the fucking season when he had he played 10 games he was doing nothing three half PPR points per game four half PPR points per game 1.6 receptions per game 3.8 targets and 22.6 receiving yards once those guys got hurt though he started balling out in the final four games of the season 20.55 half PPR points per game 23.05 PPR points per game Five red zone, not red zone receptions, just five receiving receptions per game. He had eight targets per game, 1.25 touchdowns per game, and 104.7 receiving yards per game. So what this tells me is that Brashad Perryman, if he is the wide receiver one on the Jets, which I think he easily could be, I understand they have Denzel Mims and Jamison Crowder, but I think Brashad Perryman proves to be an excellent down-the-field threat. And if Adam Gaze could pull his head straight out of his ass and stop doing the coke, Brashad Perryman will be an amazing wide receiver for fantasy football. As do all the other fucking wide receivers for the New York Football Jets. It could be Denzel Mims. It could be uh, Mr. Brashad Perryman. And it could be the other guy who was there, who I mentioned earlier, who was catching the ball a zillion times every single game. It was actually a better wide receiver than Robbie Anderson in fantasy football last year. So I think we could actually see Brashad Perryman be that guy. He's going to be my bet to be the Jets wide receiver one for fantasy football points. Maybe he's not the guy that gets the most looks, but I think if Sam Darnold is who Sam Darnold is, if he is what most believe Sammy Mono is, then Brashad Perryman should have a great season. Now, the final guy of the video, Jackie Jack Doyle, six foot five out of Indianapolis Colts, 119 FFPC ADP, 254 pounds, six foot 
5. This motherfucker is huge. 30 pounds. The guy's 40-yard dash is a 4-9, 117th percentile, 21st percentile speed score. But none of that matters because guess who the fucking quarterback is of the Indianapolis Colts? Mr. Checkdown, Mr. Tight End Man, Phillip Rivers. And you know that man loves those tight ends because he has like 11 goddamn kids. ADP tight end number 19. Overall pick 122. And he is an 11th round pick. Last year, with Jacoby Brissett being the quarterback, as well as the other friends who were playing the quarterback with Jacoby Brissett, because Jacoby Brissett ended up getting hurt, tight end numero 15 in 2019, playing 16 games, but he also had Eric Ebron there to kind of hurt him. Seven PPR points per game, 21st at tight end, 72 targets, 4.5 per game, 13th at tight end, 43 receptions, 2.7 per game, 14th at tight end, one 448 receiving yards, 28.0 per game, 17th at tight end, 6 red zone receptions, 20th at tight end, and 4 total touchdowns, 14th at tight end. Now I know I spoke about how great Phillip Rivers is at throwing the ball to the tight end, so let me show you how good he really is at it. Phillip Rivers averages overall the tight end finish as tight end number 7.7 his whole goddamn NFL career, and Frank Reich averages 175 targets to the tight end end group. Now, I understand Jack Doyle is not going to get 175 targets, but he could get 100, and Jack Doyle is going to have a fucking fantastic season. No one's talking about him because he's that old guy who just is an average tight end, but with the push from Phillip Rivers and his 12,000 kids, Jack Doyle, to me, has the top 12 potential and will have those weeks. He's being severely underlooked as a guy going in like the 10th round or not even he goes in like the fucking 12th round of your fantasy football drafts he goes before all the guys that are kind of more of those dart throws guys that you hope finish high whereas Jack Doyle to me is locked and loaded to finish high and not many people are going to talk about him because he's not a fun pick he's not one of those super high upside guys he's just a guy you know is going to be pretty fucking good so I love Jack Doyle this year and honestly tight end 10 is very possible for Jack Doyle so thank you guys all for watching this video if at any point you ended up enjoying this video, not these video, this video, please make sure to click that subscribe button down below. I love each and every single one of you guys, and I'll see you guys tomorrow with yet another banger of a video. Goodbye, my friends.